Hey, did you get a chance to play some new games in February? Uh, just a few, but they were fun. Yeah, just a few, so let's find out what games we played in just a moment. Welcome to Wisco Dice! Hey yo folks, I am your host, the Cozy with the Most, and I am joined today by... Hey, I'm Suzanne. And gosh, February was a busy month for us. It was. We just did not get in to play as many games as we had hoped, but we did manage to get a few new to us games played. Yeah, this month not only did did we only get a few of those new new to us games played, but not all of them actually came from our table of opportunity. We did have the pleasure of getting introduced to new games with friend, friends both at our monthly board game night at Misty Mountain Games and at a special event called Cabin Con. Of course, we'd love to hear what you've been playing. Let us know down in the comments below, and while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. With that, let's go ahead and find out what games we actually have been playing. And first, we're going to start with Heat, Pedal to the Metal from Days of Wonder. This is a game that one of my friends brought to Cabin Con, which Cabin Con is this event where we, uh, as a group of us, lease a cabin, or basically it's a small hotel in northern Wisconsin, and go up for a week. So there's about 20, 25 people uh, total for, the con for this little mini convention kind of thing, if you want to call it that. And we all bring piles of games and food and whatever. And so... Uh, Heat, which has been pretty hard to get your hands on right now. It's uh, currently pretty much sold out everywhere. Uh, one of my friends had a copy of it, and we actually got to play it. It actually got played two or three times over the course of the weekend. But this is really, it's its a racing game. It's like a form, almost kind of Formula One inspired. And really what it comes down to is it's really a pretty simple card management game where you have a, a deck of cards and you have these uh, kind of heat cards that are like a resource, but they're they're not entirely. And so you basically, when you're like trying to, the cards basically represent how fast your car is going. So you play these cards and cer around certain corners and bends, there's restrictions on how fast you can go. And you can still push it a little bit harder than you can, than necessary, just by spending a couple of heat cards to make up for any overages that you had when you went too fast. Uh, very interesting game. I'm really excited to play it again. Unfortunately, I think it's going to be a month or two before we can actually maybe get a copy of it for our own collection, but uh, it was really exciting, a lot of fun, and I'm really looking forward to giving you a chance to get introduced to that one. Yes, I love car racing games, so very much looking forward to trying that one out. All right, and that is Heat, Pedal of the Metal from Days of Wonder. So another game that we were able to play for the first time in February was Dice Manor by Arcane Wonders. We received a copy of the game from the publisher so that we could play it, review it for all of you. And if you haven't already, check out our How to Play video that we also have up on Dice Manor. But in this game, you are a property developer trying to create the best manner and generate the most interest in it. That's the way that you score points. It has a nice dice bidding mechanism where you're always getting something. So it's great if you are not someone who really likes dice, uh, bidding mechanics or if you're new to the bidding mechanic. It's a, it's a nice way to introduce yourself to that. It also has several different ways that you can sport, score points throughout the game and at the end. So you're not always sure who's going to win until the final scoring. Uh, there's a lot of good amount of planning that can go through there if you want to, or you can play like me and just kind of make whatever looks like the prettiest manner for you, um, or something really crazy where you've got like a bedroom next to the dining room. So, you know, you got to walk through it all crazy like that. But it's a, it's a nice, fun, enjoyable little game that's great for a family or Someone that just really wants a light uh, kind of building slash bidding game in there. So what, I mean, you played it all so cozy. So do you have any thoughts on it? Yeah, it, it was a really cool little game. Uh, it, I think it's a small box. I mean, my biggest complaint uh, about it 
really was I'm I don't care for the artwork or the general look of the game but otherwise like the game was a lot was quite a bit of fun to play very light game great for families great for uh that you know like maybe a little filler game if you're looking for something like that uh or if you're looking for or very interested in something that's going to be just a nice light bidding game that you can you know everybody can play and you don't have to worry about somebody getting upset that they didn't get the sheep they needed in order to win the game <laughs> and i will say here at wisco dice we love ga dice games it's in our name and this is definitely a game where you get to play with a lot of dice and roll them almost constantly so you know if you're a fan of dice games too this is one to check out all right and that's dice banner from arcane wonders so the next up on our list of games that we got a chance to play was Clank Catacombs from CMYK. So this is the latest iteration of the Clank franchise. And if you're familiar with Clank, then you understand that it's a kind of a push your luck, dungeon crawler or starship crawler if you're playing Clank in space. And uh, there's an element of deck building and and I would, you know, it's kind of, I would almost make this game as almost a, a combination of mechanics from Ascension as well as uh, mechanics from, uh, I think it's Dungeon Quest from, uh, used to be Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, I think they were the last publisher for that one anyways, and it goes back to Games Workshop for Dungeon Quest. Either way, it's a, it really is a push your luck, get in, try to get as much loot as possible and get back out either before you die or before uh, the time runs out and everybody else gets out. Yep, yeah, this is, it's a fun little take on the Clank yeah. game. So yeah, you want to tell us how it's a little different than the other ones? Yep. Yeah. So for this version of Clank Catacombs, what you're really doing that's different is that as you explore the dungeon, instead of having a set map that you can see at the beginning of the game, and you pretty much know where everything is going to be, so you can kind of manipulate or maybe use the, figure out the best routes to get to stuff, this one, you're laying down tiles and developing those routes and figuring out where stuff is as it gets explored. This really lends, lends to an element of extra tension and suspense at the table because you don't know exactly where or when or what the best route is to be able to get to the treasures as they come up, which is, I found this really exciting and really refreshing for the, especially the fantasy version of Clank uh, as a whole. I, it was a really neat experience, um, and I really would recommend people trying this. If you're, if even if you were a little turned off of the Clank franchise as a whole, this really did refresh fan, uh, the fantasy version in Clank in particular. I think I'm still a bit of a fan, a bit more of a fan of Clank in space personally, but I really am excited to try this one again and give it another go. Yeah, this one I will only played a couple hands of it because uh, I was just kind of filling in for someone who needed to step away. And it definitely had a different feel and a different stress level where you can't plan out as much as where you're going to go uh, forward because you don't know where the map is leading you to. So it's just, it's a, it's a, it's definitely a different feel with this game. That's, it's fun. It's, oh, you know, it's a change. It, it definitely. And, and as you were playing it, we kind of felt like I felt very bogged down. I wasn't very fast. I didn't have very much movement uh, ability in my deck. So I was very slow compared to a number of the other players. And so they were exploring and putting down new tiles. And here I'm kind of at like the, the starting tile, still trying to get off of those. And they're exploring and I'm like, I'm feeling this pressure about uh, trying to get in, you know, trying to get to anything. So when I was able to be the first one to snag one of those big treasures, I was making a beeline back for the exit just trying to make sure, trying to one, make sure that I actually finished the game, but also starting to put that extra pressure on the other players that now, oh, hey, the, none of the other big bonus treasure tiles are really out and they've got to make a decision. You know, are they going to keep pressing their luck or with the risk of not getting back in time or are they going to keep, is they just get and get out and maybe, you know, give me the nod for victory. As it worked out, I didn't win, but, uh, uh, I think it was second or something like that. So it was a fun experience. A really good, really good game. All right. That is Clank Catacombs by CMYK. So next up on our list is Flamecraft by Cardboard Alchemy. I'm sure many of you have heard this and probably have already played it, but 
we, Comancy and I had not had the opportunity to, and we don't own the game, but uh, one of the other hosts on the West Coast Ice podcast, Matt, has a copy that we were able to play with him and his wife. And after playing it, I can see why so many people do enjoy this game. It's got a great light theme. There's no significant player interaction. The names for the dragons, the spells, and the shops, they're very cute and very thematic with uh, the, the categories that they're in. So for me, that was also a, a nice little discovery as you're playing the game to see what's coming up, what comes out of the decks. At its heart, I feel this is a resource management game where you're visiting different shops to collect uh, resources or ingredients, and then you're using them to cast spells and take other actions. And so, I mean, it's it's a pretty um, basic idea of what you need to do so it, others can catch on to it very quickly so you can explain it to new players of the game or just uh, new gamers and even just a lot of ages in your family you can play with them too. The game ends when one of the two draw piles is depleted and this seems at the beginning like it's going to take a, a while. I was like oh my gosh we're going to be here forever playing this game but it, as the, the game progresses you start pulling from those piles faster and faster and then all of a sudden one of them's empty before you're ready for it and then the game's over. So with Flamecraft, I mean, like I said, it's it's a cute, light game, great for families all ages. I don't know, Cohen, you played it with us. What did you think of it? So this is exactly it. It is a pat you on the back and you're very much, I don't, I don't think there was an action you could take or anything that you were going to do in the game that didn't feel like you were getting rewarded somehow or some yeah. way. So that really does lend this game towards being a very friendly, a very good one. If you have a bunch of comp uh, competitive kids that, that get upset or whatnot because one of them got something and the other didn't, this is definitely a game where that doesn't happen, so it's great for families. I I enjoyed the play. Um, I think you could have slopped almost any theme on this game and it would have worked. The the dragon, the cute dragon theme and the puns cute. on the on the taverns and whatever. I, it was almost a little too much for me. Oh. Um, you know, I, I think of, <laughs> my dragons are big nasty creatures like smog, uh, not uh, these cute little fuddly kitty dragons in, in my opinion. But <laughs> but the game itself, it, it it did shine. It did come through that. It did have everything that it was doing definitely shine. So if you're really into that kind of cutesy artsy kind of thing with some puns that I think those were good enough for, yeah. good for the adults and then you know like I said I think it was a really good game to play with kids or younger you know younger people with as well and, and I, I can kind of see how even people who are you know maybe transitioning away from maybe look at uh what's the bird game I can't think of it right wingspan. now wingspan yeah if you're transitioning or looking for another game to add to your collection like a, a wings you know from coming off of wingspan or something like that where you like a game that is lower on the player interaction and higher on just I take, do things and I get rewarded for it. This is really a game that that meets that kind of niche and and I I will note that we did play the blinged out Kickstarter version of it. So yes. we had the metal coins, we had a couple other little fancy things and some promo cards and whatnot in it. it I you know overall it was a really cool little game and and yeah. like I said I'm interested to play it again at some point in the future. And you should definitely check it out. So that's Flamecraft by Colorboard Alchemy. Okay, so final game on the list. It really wasn't that many games that we actually got through February. I mean, between doing this video show and I mean, February is always a shorter, a little shorter on days as well. It was just it was a challenge to get these games in. But uh, Return to Dark Tower from Restoration Games was definitely a game that I was very curious about going in and getting an opportunity to play and. Yes, this is another game that I got to play at Cabin Con that I we don't actually own, so unfortunately Suzanne didn't get to play. And I yes, think this is because I should add Cabin Con is basically a guys gaming weekend. If you're wondering why I wasn't there, which is fine. It's better than you know a guys some other type of guys weekends you could have. I suppose. I, <laughs> we'll see if that may change in the future. I have no idea, but. The, the short of it was is that, yes, it was only me and Suzanne didn't get to go. Uh, but it was, you know, for me, when I sat down to Return to Dark Tower, this was a game, I think I, I, think I premised it before we played, is this, if I'm going to be called a reviewer, 
or if I'm going to, you know, be on, you know, be a podcast host or, you know, on, on a YouTube channel and this is a game that I don't ever play, I'm not sure I can look at you straight faced as an audience and say, hey, I've, you know, I'm a board game reviewer. So it was definitely one of those games that I, I know there's been a lot of hype about. I know it's a lot of people have talked about it, but I looked at it as kind of this was going to be a gimmick game. The tower mechanic was just going to be a gimmick and. And I didn't think that was it was probably going to be a, that good of a game. And what I found out after playing it was that it was quite the opposite. Very pleasant surprise. So this game is an app-based, basically, fantasy adventure game where you're traveling as a, one, of your, one of four characters around this uh, giant circular board with the Dark Tower in the center, completing a, a fantasy quest to basically overcome some big bad guy. And overall, there are better fantasy questing games from a mechanics perspective than I think this one is. But what really made this experience shine was the interactive app and the interactions with the Dark Tower itself. Because all of a sudden, there was this huge sense of the unknown and, and tension that was at the table. Every time you drop the skull, you know, you finish your turn, you would drop a skull in the tower to signify that the tower would come to life and make some noises and maybe it spits out skulls and at one player or another player at the table maybe it decides to spin maybe it decides to do something and the whole time we're unveiling you know more challenging monsters we're un unveiling you know more and more about the inevitable threat that we have to overcome so this whole experience like i said if it, if it was just focused strictly on the gameplay and you didn't have this level of suspense going on i think the game wouldn't be nearly as good but because it adds in this real big element of unknown it really ends up ultimately being a really cool experience and really enjoyable and it really did showcase like in how we ended our gameplay because at the end, uh, I'm fighting the big bad at the end of this, at, at the end of our play, and we all have the choice. Like I, I really wanted to push it at that point, but everybody else at the table is like, back off, back off. If you die, we lose. So I backed off, and then the app and the tower decide to go nuts, and it kills off another player before we get another turn. So that was, it, it, it kind of ended at a. A sour note there because it, it felt like it was out of control but we had this tension of like uh, uh don't 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 push it too hard because you don't know what's what that monster's gonna do to fight you but then it turned around that since the mo the big bad ran away and did x to one of the other players we lost anyways uh, which the only thing that i would say was annoying and i'm still annoyed about it to this day is yeah, uh, and it's been almost a month since we played it, was the fact that now I can't go back and find out what would have happened if I would have decided to push my luck. I can't see what that next card was that I was going to pick or whatnot that you normally would be able to do in a like a full non-app tabletop game. Of course, I don't think I've ever played anything that didn't, you know, that gives you that level of suspense like a, an app-driven game like this, so... Really fun, I really enjoyed it. I'm really excited to get you, get you, get into the table and get you a try at it uh i really you know it's one that i'm i actually am kind of on the lookout to get a copy of yes we will be watching yeah i don't think anybody in our available. gaming circle really has a copy of it either so this is definitely something that if we want to play it on any kind of regular basis we're gonna have to get a copy anyways that that is return to dark tower from restoration games so those are the games that were new to us that we managed to play in February. We only got a, a few games in, got a few plays of those games, and I'd really like to hear what games you guys have been playing that we should check out in the coming months, or what games you guys are hoping to uh, play coming up, get off your table of opportunity as it is. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, and subs like the video and subscribe to our channel so you can be notified when we post uh, additional reviews and thoughts on other games we've been playing. For the month of March, I really am motivated to get things off of this table of opportunity that we have. We, by the time we've recorded this, we've already actually managed to get a couple of these off our list. Yes, so a couple of them. So games that I am hoping to get off our table of opportunity would be Her Story, Trekking Through History, Casting Shadows, Frostpunk, Terracotta Army, and the Hadal Project.
And then we've even got some expansions for games that we've played several times and really enjoy. And those expansions that we want to play in March would be Chaos Order, uh, Ladies of Twa, Small World Spider's Web, which yes, has been out for a while, but it's been sitting on our table of opportunity for about as long. Uh, Mari Kaiba, The Uprising, and Cartographer's Heroes. So we'll have a full list of all of these games for you to you know, kind of review and tell us what games you think we should be trying out for next month in the show description down below. So make sure you check out this list and let us know which of these games you want us to play next month. Hey there, it's Konzi. Thank you so much for watching. We put out videos weekly here at Wisco Dice. Check out our channel for more great videos and don't forget to subscribe. We also have more great content on our website at wiscodice.com. Of course, we do this all for you, the viewers. So please like the video if you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.